screen. Let me screen this thing so it's off too. Um, I couldn't sleep, so I figured I would go ahead and do this whip parade. Um, it is, I think, five o'clock in the morning. I don't know. Um, so what I was gonna do is I was going to attach this to the other video, but I don't know how long it's gonna be because I have so many whips. So we'll see. It'll either be its own video or it'll get attached to that. Um, so I'm gonna show you all my other whips. I don't know if I have any before pictures. If I do, I'll put it in. Um, I will figure out a way to show what shops I got them from. I should probably insert like a screen cap of the Etsy shop. Um, so here we go in no particular order because um, I don't remember. Here we go. Okay, so this uh, I had a project that I started, didn't like it, restarted it, couldn't see the holes well enough to make it worth the trouble of trying to do it, couldn't mark it with my um, heat erase pens, so I just gave up on that. Um, because I didn't want to restart it a third time on lighter fabric. But I still wanted to do a brave pattern. So here is the one I switched to. Uh, I got this on Etsy. Uh, I like, if you need, if you're working on something that has a lot of confetti and you get sick of confetti, this is a really good one to switch to for a little bit because it's all solid chunks. But this is brave. So I've gotten pretty far. I had somehow managed to not get one of the colors of brown. So I got that and worked on it a bit. Um, like I said, it's nice because it's just big chunks, but you have to remember that you cannot change directions like on the way you do your lines like up here uh, I started yeah so like on this corner I started going up and down and then when I got here I'm like oh I can go back and forth now you could see the difference really bad where I switched directions so I pulled the last bit that I had done and uh, just kept going up and down until I got it. So now you can see it a little bit, but it's not so bad. But it was like, wow, you can really see that since it's a solid color. But this fabric is a um, fabric flare I get from Sparkle, I think, um, but it's sparkly. And these gaps between the colors, you can see the like the fabric. So I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna get sparkly. Well, there's not enough, and that's pretty much full coverage. So this was kind of a waste of the sparkly fabric, but whatever. So that is. One. And this one is a Vibsters. Um, people were saying they were going to do um, like a new year, new start. And they were going to do Vibsters. They're like tiles, multicolored tiles, which I had that pattern. But then I, I was like, you know what? What I want to do is start this one. She has, her patterns are amazing. I've got a few things that I have started and then a few that I've bought from her. Um, well, 
so some of her patterns she'll have like you know her original colors but then she has different color ways that she does it and she did the same pattern and she changed the colors up to make it look like an american flag so i'm like well i'm gonna do that and i should be able to get that done before fourth of july so i gritted up my fabric and i got started this fabric is odd um it happens sometimes but it's like this chunk just happened to be a bad chunk so obviously when you grid you can see it like 10 by 10 square it's even same distance this way as this way well this for some reason 10 by 10 squares are like rectangles so this flag where these diamonds are supposed to be squares on point are diamonds that are stretchy diamonds and I'm like I don't think I can do this and make it look the way it should look because the squares aren't square because it's just a little bit wonky so I'm gonna keep this fabric because it's gridded and I'll probably do something else on it and start this again um, at some point because I do want to do it and I'll also know to do um, I don't know I think it'll be okay I don't know we'll have to see if the white even shows up on this but I do want to do this pattern and then she also has one that's the same pattern and it's like beachy colors so it's like blue to like sand color like that one too but this one i really do like the pattern i just don't my fabric was wonky for it um but like most of the time you wouldn't notice it wouldn't really affect the pattern that much but on a pattern where they're supposed to be squares and now they're like stretched thin yeah um so that is that one and then this is um unconventional x this is hair and bird this is full coverage but there's no back wrap so it's like the thing that you're stitching is completely full coverage but there's nothing really around it and i saw someone else is working on it and i was like hey i'm working on that um so here is what I've got. So here is my hair and bird. That's one ear. It's almost done. I thought I had it all filled in. And then I'm gonna fill in the rest of this red. And then I'm gonna outline the rest of this ear and do this ear. But it's pretty exciting, but it is huge. But since it's not like there's not really a background behind them, I think it's doable eventually. That one I'll save to last since it's mine. And then this is Dawn Chorus by Long Dog Samplers. I don't know what really held me up on this one. I was flying through it. And then it's like I just stopped. I don't I don't know. Um, so this is really cool, uh, and I'm using all the called for, uh, gentle arts, I think, except I couldn't get the hyacinth, the purple, so I substituted, it's called, um, something oceany. I don't know. Um, so I substituted purple. It's a hand dyed that I got from somewhere. Norgrove? Nah. But here's where I got to. Um, so the only thing, so it's all the called for general arts except for the words at the top are just 310 because I wanted to start it and I didn't have the general arts yet. So this is what I've got so far. 
and then um, all these little hearts are the notes. And then I just switched the EH for a different color because that's my initials. But this is the purple that I replaced. Tangiers. Tangiers is what it's called. Um, because I couldn't get the purple hyacinth from the same shop and I didn't want to pay shipping for, um, which would have been the same price as the gloss. So I'm like, nope. But this one's really good. It's really fun. I don't know why I put it down. I put it down to start something else probably and never picked it back up. But, um, and this is my Harry Potter restart which I need to pick up again. It was just a little frustrating because I was so far when I decided to, ch to start it over. So it's like, ah, I've already stitched all this. But here's where it is. I like it much better on the dark fabric because I know I'll be able to see everything. So here's where I got to. Pretty cool. And then I made this needle minder out of a piece of Harry Potter fabric and my button maker. Um, but that is by Clouds Factory. And then this is um, my Shits Creek sampler. And I have the, the motel and I've got the birds and I've got everything at the top. And I'm to the point where I gotta do the other buildings. I don't really wanna do it anymore. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish all the words at the bottom. And frame out the words and just do that part. And there's a bicycle here. But I think that's what I'm gonna do because that's really what drew me to the pattern. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna just do the bottom part and frame that as the project and just forget the rest. And then this is Scissor Sampler by Telen Emblem. I saw Elizabeth Ann can stitch. She stitched this and as soon as she pulled it out, I was like, I need that. And I ordered it. And then I was like, I want mine to be a little different. So I did it on blue fabric. And I love it. And really, I could probably get this done in a few days if I would just sit and do it. Because it's not very big. So here's my scissor sampler. started on this butterfly and then it's like I put it down and this I'm using all of the I'm using all the called for on it um, and it's a paper pattern that I put in the pattern keeper but then you you can only mark off your stitches you can't really track anything so I had my little cheat sheet, but now I've scanned it into the computer as a PDF and put it into markup X stitch and there it, you can search the symbols and stuff. You just have to kind of set it up as you go. So I'm using it on that instead. So I don't really need this little cheat sheet anymore, but I don't know. This is always, I should get that out again. But I think everybody does that. But I've been trying to get stuff out that I haven't stitched on in a while. Like I said, it's like I'm going through it. Um, so that one I might actually get out because I can probably finish that in a couple days. So I'm going to put that off to the side. This is Sweet Bee, I think is what it's called. 
from Citrobia. Now, the first time I saw this, it was in a magazine, whichever one she submits her patterns to. And I was like, yep, that's getting saved. Screen, you know, I'm screenshotted so I can zoom in and stuff and stitch. Um, and then later, it was released on um, Etsy as a PDF, so I got it. So I never even had to use my screenshots. But this is how far I got. And this is one you can really tell. When you throw in that back stitch, it changes it so much. Because this just kind of looks like a big blob with some stripes. And then you put the back stitch in and you get the beehive. And then this looks crazy, but that's like the part of the words that's cross stitched and then you back stitch the like the legs of the letters and then this is a I think it's called Berkshire Hive it's a fabric blend but it's a honeycomb and then this is a, a needle minder I ordered just for this <laughs> And this one my mom got me for either my birthday or Christmas, I can't remember. It's got a big long name, but it's a geisha girl, geisha doll. And I've been trying to like kind of work my way down so I can get to some colors. Because this is a lot of black just for her hair. So here is how far I've gotten. So this is all black. So I'm trying to get in uh, where the highlights are so I can just go and get it done. So I worked down and got this bit and then I got the bangs. So I'll go over here with my next thread once I run out of this thread and go down and get this highlights down here. So I can start kind of filling it in. Um, because the pattern itself is super colorful. It's got like all these colors in her kimono. And then this is a fabric. No, this is um, my vintage needle arts fabric. They're really cool. I don't, I like the colors of um, Pictures Plus, but I don't like how soft and floppy and it's, I don't like, because I'm an Ada stitcher, I don't know if that matters, but I'm used to my fabric being a little bit stiff and that those are so floppy and I feel like I have trouble getting the right tension because they're so soft. Um, so I try to find stuff like this where it's pretty, it's not like stand up on its own stiff, but it's a little, I don't know, starchy or something. And then this is Why can I not think of what this is called? Cardinal Points by Long Dog Samplers. And this is one, it's a Long Dog Sampler, but you can't get it on their website because they charted it just for general arts. So you can only get it on the, as a paper pattern. And it calls for a million general arts. So I did the DMC conversion I mean, that's a lot of colors. And I have a page finish. And I love it. And I'm to the point where I got one of my cardinals here, like right here. <laughs> 
and then there's a cardinal here. But it's really cute because there's like so much going on and the, the patterns are always like that. Um, but this pattern, like a lot of theirs are really, um, there's lots of backstitch to bring out like all the little critters and all the little details. This one doesn't have a lot of that. Um, so it's kind of nice that it doesn't have that, but also, I don't know, I really like this one. Um, so like I said, I found a DMC conversion for it, which is hard to do because like gentle arts are hand dyed and they're variegated. So when they give you a DMC conversion for that, they give you both colors in that variegation. So if it's like a green and brown variegated, they give you the DMC for the green and the DMC for the brown. So you kind of gotta pick what you want to try. I suppose you could get both and just do blends. That'd be kind of annoying though. I don't know. But like I said, I really like this one because it's super colorful. It's not like crazy confetti. And then that's it for what I have right here. Give me a second and I will grab another stack. So here's the next stack, and I think this is pretty much it, other than what I have downstairs, but that's what I think I showed you in house two. What else did I bring down there? Oh, I did bring one more thing down there. We'll see. Okay, so this one is another long dog, but this is not like the regular long dog samplers. This um, is, if you go to their website, there's like categories, and this is like miscellaneous or something. I don't know. But this was their Christmas thing that they did the one year. And I followed them on Facebook, and I saw this, and I was like, yeah, I need that. So this is Santa Quill. I finally finished Quill. Um, and now I'm doing the little village at the bottom. There's only two colors in this, black and white. And then I got this fabric flare, um, that I thought would be cool because it kind of looks like a snowy sky. Like a snowy, yeah, not necessarily night sky, but it's a snowy sky. This is Santa. So I got him all done. He's his sleigh is getting pulled by rabbits. And then I started the little village. So there's the village and then there's like snowflakes underneath and stuff. So there's black snowflakes and then there's white snowflakes. There's one stitch of red that's on one of the dogs, so it's supposed to look like Rudolph. But I love this. And they, they showed a really cool thing that I really want them to release. And it was just a doodle. So they're like, eh, we're not really, it was just something fun I put together. I'm going to freaking figure out how to stitch it because it's so fun. But whatever. And surprise, surprise, here's another long dog. This one is Spangled. Um, this one I saw and I was like, I need that, but it's got a whole bunch of stars. I can't think of how many it says on the description, how many stars, but none of the stars are the same. They're all different. Um, there's no repeats. And this one I did get the gentle arts for because I just had to have it and I wanted to have it look the way theirs looked. And then this is a fabric flare. This one's called whitewash wood or something like that, but it looks like wood. So I thought this would be cool because it kind of looks like a sign. But and there's where I got. That corner is pretty much done. I'm going to do the border like across 
and like kind of down like this and then I'll start in the middle part. So what I do is I stitch the black and then I fill in the colors and then I stitch a chunk of black and fill in those colors. So my bag is pretty, pretty tidy considering. And I try to find needle liners that match and I saw that I have these stars, so I put stars. Um, a lot of times I make a needle minder that matches. Um, I will print up print up the picture super small, and uh, then I use my button maker to make a pin, but I just don't put the pin part in. Like, there's like the back piece and the front piece that you put the picture on, but in the back piece there's a pin already in it, so when it's squished, you know, that pin stays. So I just take the pin off before I make it, and then I just put magnets on. So like this one is actually what the middle of the pattern looks like. So a lot of times I do that. And this is one that I got from mybobbin.com and there's a whole bunch by this artist um, and they're really cool. They're like watercolory and then they're like backstitched around them to give them detail. So this one's a uh, Sakura, Sakura branch which is cherry blossom. But this fabric was my colossal octopus. But I decided I'm not going to do that, so I basically just uh, turned it around on the frame, or scrolled to the other end of it, and I'm going to use it for a bunch of different projects because it's huge. So this is Sakura. So this is like the watercoloriness, and then there's some that are like more detailed, and then they'll have the back stitch around them. And then, so that'll take up till this corner. And then I've kind of got lines marked out on where other projects are going. So like on this side is gonna be uh, my oh, Love From Above. It's giraffes. Um, it's a big, tall, skinny one. And then there's something else that can fit here. And then there's, I have another one of these round ones that's going to go under it. So, I mean, this little, this fabric will all be used eventually. I want to start that love from above, but I don't, I don't want to have it. Probably because there's been other stuff I've started. And this one, I think, is about my last one. I've gotten rid of a bunch. I pulled a bunch off, so. But this is Halloween Quaker by Lila Studio. Um, I was intimidated by this one because I thought it was really big and I didn't want to do it because I, I didn't think I would ever finish it. And then I realized it's not really that big. There's another one that's the Cochrane Hollow. It's those are the really really big ones and for some reason I was thinking this was just as big but it's not. So this is Halloween Quaker and this is another fabric flare but this is how big it is so like this is the bottom line here so that's how big it is so I'm like oh yeah I can do that and this I, I was like in the middle of stitching and I just put it down and this one I have all the called for floss and I think it's all classic color works. And then this was a temperature chart and it was a honeycomb to temperature chart and I'm like oh you know I really want to do a temperature chart but I don't like the fact that most of them don't have like a frame that you fill in you just stitch as you go and I figured that's just not gonna work for what I want 
Um, but this one is not only a honeycomb, but you stitch the honeycomb and then fill in the little honeycombs. So I was going to do this one. Um, and I just, I decided it's just not for me. I love these temperature charts. I want to do them so bad. But then it comes to like, that's a lot. So this has a start on it. You can see it. I, I didn't want it to be like super bold because, you know, it's just the outline. But that way I would be able to see where the uh, colors go. And then this is an x design. I think it's called Grandma Grandma's Slip. So it's got like yellowy splotches. I thought, well, that'd be cool. I don't know. I think I'm going to try to get more of the frame done by the end of the year. That way maybe I can do it next year. Um, the frame is the intense part. So maybe if I just do that, I could actually do it. And then this was a pin that I got from a thrift store and I just turned it into a needle minder. So yeah, so that's all of the ones that I didn't, like, that I haven't showed. The other ones sitting here are from the last video. Um, oh wait, there's one more. This is my DMC 250th anniversary piece. This was a whole big thing. I saw an ad for it in an old cross stitch magazine. I found some cross stitch magazines at a thrift store and I saw an ad for this. It was free. All you had to do was, uh, you know, send in an envelope and DMC would send you this chart. Now this magazine was from, what are, what's the year on this? I think it says, no, it says, ah, um, it's from like the nineties. So I'm like, oh, I sent DMC a message saying, Hey, I saw an ad for this pattern. I was wondering if there's any way you guys still have it because I really want to do it. And the lady said, Oh, well send me a picture of what it looks like and I'll see if I can find it. And she did. So she sent me a PDF. Now the problem is it's not necessarily hand drawn, but the chart is not um, like the squares aren't all square, you know, it's a little off. So I can't really even scan it and put it into um, markup. I might try again though, because boy, it's no fun working from this paper chart. But it's not a big pattern, but it is a shit ton of confetti. So that's where I've got. And then there's back stitching across the top that looks like the little branches in the trees. Here's what it looks like when it's done. And it's going to be awesome. But this is quite the color list. All the MC. And then it's like, I really want to do it. I might try one more time of putting it in um, to the markup. Now see, this is another one. I can show you this pattern. See, because there's no way you can see that. You know why? Because I can't see it and it's right here. And this is the blown up version. When she sent me the PDF, it's really small. Um, so I like blew it up and you still can't see some of the symbols. You kind of have to guess. Um, but yeah, I do love it and it's beautiful and I really do want it. Um, so, and then that pen is one that I got from Hobby Lobby and I turned into a needle minder. So other than that, the only other one I have is, oh, sorry, my foot is going to sleep. Um, the only other one I have is my adventure die. This one is one that I am, uh, charting myself from a diamond painting from Diamond Art Club. Here's what it looks like. It is massive. And even if I would have thought I could do it, 
I, it would have taken me forever to do it as a diamond painting so it just hangs on my wall because their plastic is see-through so you can see the pretty picture but I decided I'm gonna rechart it now my butt's asleep take away um I'm gonna rechart it as a cross stitch um so that's what I'm doing and I'm almost done I can you saw the picture of how far I've got charted and then this is how far I've gotten I am all the way across the top and this is this is three runs across the top because I'm using the royal rose method so it's two blocks and two blocks and two blocks so that where I've got to, I'm not very far, because it's like really long. But I did get to do Bubblegum's face, which was exciting. Um, so that's it, pretty much. The only other one I have that's not up here is uh, my Stitch Rovia the beach and it's just the word beach but it's decorated I will insert a picture of that one it's fun it's another one I saw it in the magazine and saved it because it's absolutely something I was gonna do and um, I don't know at some point this past year she released it as a PDF and I could not buy it fast enough because it'll be so much easier to stitch it off of PDF than a scan but so that's the only other one I got that's my mid-year whip parade and if I see anything else I will grab it and put it in but I think that's it I don't think there's anything here to do oh there it is this is my drawn thread it's called good tidings and I have a page finish. So this, I got the kit um, from Drawn Thread. So this is the silk, the called for silks, but not the called for fabric. This is fabric I dyed myself. But the called for fabric is linen and it was kind of this brownish color. So I thought, well, I'm gonna do one of those ones I um, dyed myself. And this has specialty stitches in it. It's got smearing acrosses for the snowflakes and then it's got um, these doodads for the leaves or the pine needles. And then there's a bead on each of their hats because there's a bird on each end of Merry Christmas and then they have a bead for their eyes. So this was my first time using silks and my first time doing specialty stitches. I wanted it done for Christmas that year to give to my mom so we could hang it up. It did not, it did not happen. Okay, so that is it. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, my Big Trouble in Little China and Fifth Element, I am restarting. Um, they were my absolute first counted cross stitch projects and they're on 14 count and they look bad because the coverage is so bad with two strands on 14 count so I'm gonna restart it on 18 um, other than that, that's it I will see you guys next time and I will make sure I take a picture of all of these before I put them back and just make a new folder or replace all the pictures in my folder on my phone so I'll have reference whew, reference pictures from where they were to where I get to the next time I stitch them so I am going to try to lay them back down I have a really bad cold so it's like I woke up and when I rolled over all of a sudden I couldn't stop coughing it's better when I'm sitting up, so 
I thought, okay, I can prop myself up and I'll be fine. And it was better, but I was still talking like this. So I figured I'm just going to get up. But it's been a couple of days of not much sleep. So I'm going to try to go back to sleep before everybody wakes up. And in my lovely pajamas, I put on a ball for you guys. That's pretty exciting. I'll see you guys later. Bye.